Aloha. Happy Thanksgiving the day before. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we choose to fill our hearts and minds with thanksgiving. And amidst all the thoughts that everyone's dealing with, we pray that you would help us, give us grace to, to think on the things we're thankful for to think on the people we're thankful for. Most of all, to think on the God we are thankful for. We thank you that you're, you're everything. You're our hope, our love, our grace. You're our redemption. <clears throat> so Lord, help us to choose thanksgiving, even as we prepare our hearts to receive your word, to learn from your word by your spirit. We pray, God, that you would be pleased and receive our worship. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We set our Yeah. 
out. Yeah, the place, uh, I don't know, some of you may uh, be watching you while you're at work or <laughs> wherever you're at. Just say thank you from your heart. Thank you. But Lord, we pray, uh, we want a thankful heart uh, in it and through it, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that uh, all of those who are joining in, and then those we're connected to, those on our hearts, those are, who are on our prayer list, even now, uh, right now, just those people running through uh, your hearts and minds that you're praying for and have just going through various challenges. Let's thank the Lord for His presence in their lives. Let's thank Him in advance as we pray for His presence uh, to touch them, to give them grace in, in just where they're at and their hardships. We look to you, God. We look to you, Lord. We say thank you. Lord, thank you, God. Go ahead and just lift up the people. Uh, I know that's sort of that, you know, sort of rapid fire prayer. But Lord, we believe you honor that, Lord. We pray for just the, the ones that are running through our hearts, Lord. In our own families and in the family of God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Lord, if we can be your hands, your feet, your voice of encouragement uh, to to those, Lord, uh, help us to, Lord, lead us to reach out, lead us to share a text, a call, or whatever it might be, Lord, and uh, we just pray that uh, you'd lead us to be your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that opens our hearts, that teaches us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as our counselor, our teacher, our guide. Uh, we, we ask that you would continue to, to speak to us, to bring conviction, to, to change us, transform us into just the image of, of God practically, Lord. Even this day, Lord, may we be a pleasing, your pleasing ambassador your pleasing son, your pleasing daughter, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Lord, we thank you again for um, just calling us this time to live where we're at and to live in the state, to live in the, the country that we are. And we pray for um, the president now. We pray for president-elect. Uh, we pray for all of our, the government leaders nationally and locally. Lord, I Again, I know it's just a, a, a just a, a prayer for your mercy, a prayer for grace, Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving for uh, yeah, allowing us to live in uh, such a, uh, I mean, it's a great time, but such a challenging time. So, Lord, we, we thank you. Lord, we pray for a spirit of just a repentance. We are asking for a reviving. A revive. Start with your church, your bride. Start with us, God. Revive us. And, and we pray the, the work of your Holy Spirit, God. Uh, you're great. You are God. You're king. We declare you king over our hearts, our lives, our families, our communities, our workplaces, uh, our state, our country. Lord, you are king. Lord, help uh, just 
just nothing to rule our hearts except, except you, Lord. And we, we don't want our worries. We don't want fear. We don't want uh, anxiousness. Lord, we don't want, uh, I don't want my apathy and complacency uh, to, to rule, Lord. Your king, rule our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, so good. <clears throat> we surrender to you. Teach us, Lord, this great day that you have made. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, aloha, everyone, tuning in. <clears throat> it's good to um, just be with you. And um, I, I can see... Again, some of the comments, uh, just because I have the camera facing this way, so um, those of you are tuning in, Sylvia, and oh, wait, anyway, kind of the feed runs up, but yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in, and, and those who, who may just tune in later, uh, we just pray that uh, all of our, our hearts would would be changed, and Boy, what a what a season, right? I mean, we continue to to look to Him and and ask God for for this persevering grace uh, in the midst of all that's going on in our state and country, etc. And and so uh, we're thankful, though. Let's be a, a thankful people, uh, especially you know in this season of Thanksgiving. It's a great reminder <clears throat> to be thankful uh, for for Him and then just for what He's doing in our midst. So. Uh, we're going to get into uh, the character of God in Psalm 95. Uh, I sent out the notes and may have had a typo. I think I may have put Psalm 96. I was thinking about the last two weeks we're in. Hey, honey. Sneak up on yeah. <laughs> I saw her, but I wanted uh, my wife to just help and just read the Word of God. Uh, so get your Bibles out, Psalm 95. We're going to jump into that here in a little bit and if you do have the the printout I basically printed out the the psalm with margin so if you print that out uh, one of the the great ways that we can study is to you know look at the scripture and then observe uh, who's the main character of course God is the main character of the Bible but who's the main character what are some uh, consistent themes throughout and so to circle underline make notes on that side of um, the margin that that I left there so uh, you can do that uh, along the way all right by the way if you don't have uh, aren't receiving you know the day church just email me or somehow get a hold of me through give me your email and uh, we'll put you on the list all right so yes Lord you're ready Okay, all right, so Psalm 95. So let's read through. We'll come back and make some observations, and, and uh, I'll share some things that cross-reference uh, through, through the Bible. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, loud and clear, hon. Okay. <laughs> Thankful for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thankful for you, too. Okay, Psalms 91. 95. Oh, sorry, 95. <coughs> there. Oh, come. <coughs> Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with yes. songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands, hand is the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. Mm -hmm. The sea is his, for he made it and his mm. hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Mm. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Mm -hmm. For 40 yeah. years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people who go astray in their heart, mm -hmm. and they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. 
chest. Uh. <laughs> that's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the beginning, but that ender the from. Mm. Uh, sorry. From verse eight, eight yeah. down, it's like, oh, Jesus, help us all. Yeah. Psalmist is trying to get them to learn from the past, right? The yeah. history yeah. of that, Israel. That's it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So anyway, sorry. No. Go. No. Any other? <laughs> I'm just like. Oh. No. Any other comments? That'd be. He's, That'd be good. He just, wants us to learn. Yeah, yeah. From the history yeah. of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's parts of the Bible, and then like in this text too, that uh, it does it. I mean, it still throws me off. So you just really have to pause and then kind of think through the context of the Bible. For instance, the right. the last verse. Therefore, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And so it's like, I mean, that particular psalm, this particular psalm and song ends with, with that, which I know it, it's not comforting, right? <laughs> or I, I, I don't know, I, yeah, it's just not comforting. It, it speaks of <clears throat> uh, this part of the nature of God that uh, gets angry and does execute judgment, which I believe, He's still that God, but again, to look at it in the context Old Testament and New Testament, and to know that Jesus has fulfilled, uh, you know, the promises and, and and the law, the commands, and He is our rest, mm -hmm. right? So we we can find on this side of the cross that He is our rest, and that uh, we are pardoned uh, from. I mean, the the judgment or the wrath of God, I believe, because of the person, the life, the work of Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Jesus, yes. that we enter that rest. And and then, again, application-wise, who doesn't need rest throughout the day in mm -hmm. spirit, right? When it comes to all that we're, we're dealing with, going through individually, uh, is, is church, is the body of Christ, and then you know, amidst uh, just all the issues and problems and uh, darkness that's around us. So, uh, Jesus, you are our rest. Uh, I'm going to make make note uh, now, in in that particular ver verse, I, I put a, a reference to Matthew 11, 28. Come, come to me, oh. right? All you who are weary, weary uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest take my yoke uh, upon you and learn from me. So I, that's that learning part to learn from me. Um, I am meek and, and gentle in heart. So, so he gives rest because he's the fulfillment. Jesus is rest. So we come to you, Jesus, for that rest. Uh, not in just in an, uh, a one-time prayer, but uh, throughout, mm -hmm. right? Jesus' presence the presence of who he is as rest and peace and grace. So, yeah, that, so that I, I, I have to bring it kind of full circle and that we should, we should bring it full circle. So, and that's what I'm talking about when we look at an Old Testament passage like this that declares truth that uh, we, we should look at the context of the whole. And I, I know I'm always reminding, I, I want to be reminded, I want to remind and teach us, the people of God, that again, how we observe and interpret the Bible is is important, and many of us know there's, you know, again, we're all observers and interpreters, and you know, there can be various applications, but we're looking for what is, uh, what is a central sort of observation and interpretation of of the Scripture. What does the Scripture mean? So, yeah. All right, I know I. Got a uh, little sidetrack there. Kind of threw you off. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Yeah, but but that learning from is key, you know, in verse, like verses eight, eight through three eleven, because it's that reminder, and, and that's what we were talking about Sunday. Right. Like we, I mean, we got to learn from. Forget Paul saying, uh, forget what lies behind, and and press toward the goal of the prize of the upward calling in in Christ. But it's not that. 
I think God says, okay, forget every bad thing that happened to you. Again, we know there's scars, etc., and we see it in the Bible that that there's, I think that uh, reference to uh, just learning from, yeah. right? But being able to say, don't let that, don't let that issue, so forget it, not letting that issue take root and take hold and be king and rule your, your mind, your thoughts. So, yeah, yeah, that's so good. And not only for us, but for us to teach others. I'm thinking yeah. of my kids. I want my kids to learn from from my mistakes, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. My wrong, my disobedience. Just like we're learning from the Israel. Oh, that's good, yeah. we got to pass that down. We can't yeah. be quiet, but share that. So yeah. they can learn too. Oh, that's so, so good. Again, that's, I mean, that's the psalmist. No, it's not, uh, again, that's, we, we got to consider that because that's what the psalmist and the word of God is about. It's, yeah. it's a recording of, uh, of their life, of God's involvement and intervention, et cetera, and people's lives um, and humanity. And, and so that's what's been passed down through the word, right? We're right. learning from the word by the Holy Spirit. And, and we, do, we, we definitely don't want to pass it down. And that's, that's Jewish culture, being able to pass down the roots of God's truth and who he is to the children, to the generations. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's, that's good. Uh, open our hearts to that. And then there's some specific things we do learn from this, right? Uh, so I was planning on kind of starting up, up top, but since we're kind of talking that's... about this learning, kind of this text from 8 through 11, I mean, look at that passage. Like, what are some specific things that that God's speaking to you that we can learn from and then pass down? And again, it's a day-to-day. -day. It's an ongoing thing when it comes to, for me, uh, and you see it in the text, the, the reference has to do with, un, well, unbelief, going astray, re rebellion, right? Complaining. And complaining, gr grumbling and complaining and you think, Oh, okay, there's, there's lots of applications uh, uh, because I fall into those traps. Do you? <laughs> she does, not as much as I do. But, yeah, so I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So okay. when, when we look at, uh, so verse 8, do, so don't harden your heart. So even right there, right, it's like uh, that lesson uh, from the psalmist saying, Look, this is a recall from uh, Exodus 17, and so it's the first seven or so verses. So the psalmist is recording this song, right, as a lesson uh, from Exodus 17, 1 through 7. And you know what? Let me uh, read verse, uh, well, somewhere down towards verse uh, 7, but this is from Exodus 17. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel. So there you go, because of that, that grumbling and quarreling. So uh, that text in Exodus, the psalmist uses, and it's, it is a song, a song of remembrance, uh, encouraging, ongoing encouragement to learn from this lessons. Don't harden your hearts. So it makes me think too, again, one sort of observation is, wow, grumbling, <laughs> complaining, it can harden your heart, right? Or, and I know it works both ways. A, a, a hardened heart would be more maybe prone to grumbling because, you know, there's, there's callousness, there's, you know, hardness there. But it seems to work both ways that I know when I get into sort of that grumbling, complaining, my mind goes there, my heart, my attitude, my words begin reflecting that heart. Uh, my heart grows more callous. It, you know, it's just more hardened. So, yeah, that, so that, that's, a, uh, that's, that's a good convicting thought as well. And verse 9, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, uh, that's that lesson, right? Yeah. Looking back. Uh, and when you think about our kids, Let's learn from 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking, yeah, we want to teach our kids this, and I think our grown kids, of course, Kai, Asia, staying with us for the time being, and and then I think, oh, wow. Uh, uh, they see where we've been put to the test. I mean, we want to still pass down lessons, yep. right, to them. We're blessed to have Carter and Amora and, and, and them here and keeping in touch with our our kids trying to pass down lessons but boy I, th I think on the flip side again I know this is some application but I think on the flip side uh, they've seen their father and mother put to the test and fail yeah. right so it's the lessons like whoo uh, and and they can learn from either our hardened hearts yeah and uh, or our I, soft hearts and and I think over the years, I trust they have learned from our mistakes, our sins. I mean, that, that's me majority of the times. Uh, but then by God's love and grace and presence, they're learning uh, to recover, to repent, to be renewed, uh, to, to press that sort of reset uh, button, to go to Jesus. So, yeah, that's, I mean, all the lessons wrapped up in there. And then verse 10, uh, for 40 years I loathed that generation and said, they, they are a people who go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. Uh, and, and it comes from sort of that recap too from Numbers 14. And uh, boy, again, uh, you look at the lessons from a, you know, a people of God, Moses and and all the interactions, the failures, the faults, but also God's intervention uh, in, in their time. He says, they are a people who go astray in their hearts. Yeah, so again, it's, yeah, God's, God was looking at the heart, even though we, when we see the Old Testament, we, uh, we know there's, there's rules, there's standards, there's commandments, right? There's the law. And there's a lot of regulations, but I believe you see you see God looking at the heart. You see God giving grace. It's almost like revealing Christ and the person of Christ, the person of the Godhead uh, to the people of God in the midst of. So he's looking at the heart. And it's interesting. He's, he says they go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. Again, this is just one thought for me. Uh, it, it's uh, again my my observation. It, it's interesting. They they may have known God, but just not His ways. You know, just just a thought. Mm -hmm. It because there's that part they go astray in their heart, right? Like there's a sort of a reference to they know me in heart, but they just don't know how I operate. They don't. They don't. And they've seen it, but they're, you know, it's like that going astray and hard and, and forgetting about just the ways of God that, you know, he'll be faithful through it. <laughs> Stay with me. Uh, there's lessons in the wilderness in these 40 years. And so, yeah. Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> Yeah. Does that make sense, though? Yeah. yeah. It's like that heart and ways. And, uh, yeah. So, uh and then verse 11, therefore I swore in my, my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And again, we thank Jesus for being uh, the fulfillment of, you know, the law. And, and he's, he is our rest. Yeah. Uh, he is our peace. And hey, by the way, um, and I, I see, oh, Sylvia comments. Again, I can only see like certain lines there. Teach your children and uh, let them teach you. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, love that. And others, if, if you want to comment observations you see or just encouragement, again, prayer requests, etc., just go ahead and fellowship uh, there in, in the comments. And I'd love to go back and, and see that and, and then pray and all that. So, But let's, uh, let's look at uh, verses 1. I know we kind of went backwards, but just going with that flow. Verses 1 through 7. And when you think about the character of God, uh, in this psalm, when you look at it, I mean, what character of God do you see in there? And again, you can make comments, but just as, as you're looking at that, uh, I mean, marvel in who he is, but 
also learning and, and being reminded who is God in, in this section, verses 1 uh, through 7, right? And there's a call to action. He said, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Why? Like, who is God there? He's, 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 he's the rock of our salvation. So he's the foundation. He's our assurance um, of our salvation. And so who is he's Savior? <laughs> Again, he's strength in that. His, his character is strong, is strength. So he not only gives strength, he is strength, right? He not only provides salvation, he is salvation. He is uh, Savior to be exalted and, and worshipped. So throw in any comments. All right. Yeah. I'm going to keep mm -hmm. going. So verse 2. So let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let mm -hmm. us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. And again, that's, that's, our, that's the people of God's heart, right? There's this encouragement to, to give unto but I look at even a text like that, and I think, wow, what's, why? Why? Because there's something of God to be worshipped, right? Because he's God. Because think about it, he's, he's your rock. He, he's, he's your assurance. And even as he ties in in this psalm, uh, sort of that context, the storyline is, he's your assurance through the wilderness. And he's your rock of salvation. He'll, he'll save us from grumbling, from complaining, you know, those through the wilderness. That, so let's worship him. Uh, learn from lessons that we've been through wilderness times. We, we, I have, I don't know about you, I have complained. I have grumbled. I have had that sort of renegade, rebellious um, spirit. I have heart in my heart, but he's my rock. I go back to him and, mm -hmm. and worship him because he's my assurance. Uh, and otherwise I'm left to like, just sink in my grumbling and complaining. And I just, you know, I, yeah, heart in my heart and I'm going astray. I'm, and, and I've been there, right? Well, right. You know, like, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know how much you know, she knows. So. But I'm so thankful we can come into his presence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this God that's talking Oof. about here, the great God. Yeah. yeah. Great king above all gods. I mean, we can come into his presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and it's, so again, not just because it's Thanksgiving week, but uh, again, it's looking at this psalm and, yeah, with, with Thanksgiving, with Thanksgiving. And so again, I know some of this speaks to me that sometimes, you know, I don't feel worthy because we, I look at, oh, I just, I went astray. I feel bad for sinning. I feel bad for straying, hardening my heart, treating you right? again in practical ways. Uh, you know, we've, we've gotten, I've gotten myself in messes and, and I believe you know, through a psalm like this, the lesson, kind of the lesson and application learned is, look, don't, don't sink in that. Mm. Like, look to the God who is the rock of your salvation and, and proclaim. Like, make that choice to, to say, I'm going to come with song. In, in the midst of even the hardship, uh, we come with song. We come to, to Him uh, into his presence with thanksgiving and making that joyful noise to him. Uh, so again, the character of God uh, in this, anyway, we're talking about sort of our response to who he is uh, because he is rock, sure foundation, firm uh, foundation. So, and then verse three, I mean, I mean, really brings this to a head. For the Lord, this is why, for the Lord is who? Not just what, but he's who. He's a great God and a king above all gods. When I read phrases like this, above all gods, um, and if you've been around myself, you hear me say, I, I'm always saying it's like, you know what, there are other gods. I mean, um, there are 
other idols. Uh, there are um, other, um, well, gods that, that we make gods here in this culture, but, but again, e even in, in their day and time, whether it's idolatry, you know, artifact making things or creating golden images or other gods who are named, right? And so it's, it's like other religions in our day, same thing, other religions, other gods. But I, don't, I just say that because we need to recognize, look, we as Christians, uh, we, we serve, we know uh, the one true God. And I guess some people, in conversations along the years, for me, it's like, no, there's no, there's no other gods. There's like only one God. No, people have uh, made gods, <laughs> again, created images of God, and then, of course, false prophets, etc., uh, would make themselves God as if, you know, they were God, and God's uh, a holy prophet or representation, but the Lord is a great God, and He is the great King above all gods. So I think a recognition and the lesson, just to be aware, look, there's, there's, there's other gods, there, and, and we know through uh, the epistles, there's, there's a war, there's, I mean, Satan wants to take the place of God, right? And he can't do it, so he wants the people of God to stumble, harden their hearts, and uh, like replace God, whether it's in the heart or uh, pursuit of finances, money, homes, making like, you know, where, where those things, or even other people become sort of kings or rulers or, or gods in, in that way. So I see that uh, there's... You know, there's a need to just at least recognize, be aware that, yeah, there's other forces, there's other rulers. And uh, again, you know, Paul brings that out, right? Spiritual forces and rulers and authorities in high places. I mean, so there's, there's warfare there we need to be aware of. But he is <laughs> the Lord, the great God and king above all. <laughs> king above Satan, king above so hey, if, so again, this is just coming to my heart. As be aware, ask the Lord for discernment as as we wrestle through issues. You know, for Becky and I, we're asking the Lord for discernment. What's of sort of the flesh, and then is there, is there spiritual influence? Is there spiritual attack? And and so you know, we along the way we ask the Lord, give us discernment where there's some spiritual warf warfare because, you know, we may be f sort of fighting, wrestling with the wrong issue. Yeah, there's issues to be resolved, but let's also deal with these issues that are very real, uh, that, that are satanic, that spiritual warfare. And so, i uh, throw that out when I think of other gods. Yeah. So, uh, Verse 4. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains. Uh, the heights of the mountains are his also. Verse 5, so again you see this theme. The sea is his for he made it. That's, who, who is he? What's his character? Who, who is he? As he's creator, mm -hmm. right? He's maker. And his hands formed the dry land, then it goes back into that response. So oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. Our maker. Our maker, our creator. Um, so again, to yeah, it just makes me pick up the guitar. And, you know, and you don't need a guitar, just, just to worship. Just God, thank you. We just acknowledge you as maker as creator, as king over all. And then through it, Lord, let us learn from lessons uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, let us check our hearts. Is there hardness? Are we going astray in any way? So th those are the, some things that, that come to mind uh, for me. And uh, verse 7, For he is our God. So again, just that constant, 
focus on, like, no, he's God, not no other gods, uh, not, not you, not your heart, not your issue. Learn from those lessons, but for he is our God, and we are the people of his pastor, the sheep of his hand. So today, if you hear your voice, and he goes into, do not harden your hearts. Uh, Psalm 23, I think of Psalm 23 in that, um, that verse there in verse 7. He is our God. We are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And uh, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for accomplishment, for success, uh, for a better life. Hmm. Hmm. It's for his name's sake. For his name's sake. Not for his we may have sake. all those. So we want protection, provision, success, favor, a bright future, and a hope. Hmm. Yeah, just, just really check our hearts. It becomes a, a motive thing right like he's addressing here be careful keep your hearts attuned uh, just connected with him and and lord is this for your name's sake i mean we're going through some well i mean going through evaluating some things with finances and house and there's so much maintenance etc and it's like uh okay we want to steward properly but we're asking the lord for discernment for, uh, it's for his name's sake. I mean, it's like, you know, we, I know, way back dedicated the home to the Lord, and, uh, and, and this is for your glory. Yes, it's, we're thankful for us, our, our home, but, but to want to share it uh, for the glory of God, for family, uh, for the people of God. So, so even now, it's like, whoa. It's all the more come up like this home we're meeting here as a church. And we've always, we're thankful we opened our home to groups and small groups and this. And uh, so we've done that. But it's like, well, we're having now service here for this time being. But it's for his namesake, yes. right, to be able to, to give. It's, it's, it's not ours. It's, it's, we're stewarding. And so, and I think about, being his sheep saying lord no you're you're the great shepherd you're gonna you're gonna lead us still waters restore our soul guide us in paths of righteousness uh, for you for your namesake for your kingdom and when i think of the character of god as the shepherd you think okay there's all kinds of characteristics uh, we can go through uh, with him as a sh shepherd he he cares, he loves, he provides. And we see it in Psalm 23. So I believe that those are some connections to uh, this psalm. Like, think about, right? So, uh, And she ooh. need a shepherd. Yes, yes. And we're considered his sheep. Yeah. We need his yeah. sheep. Yeah, and there's, so again, there's, you see all these sort of themes and connections, right? Like, king shepherd i mean he's the great god but then you see this connection of uh, like going astray well sheep will go astray hard again you know about like real sheep hardening their hearts but they, I mean, they obviously have they're stubborn i don't know how rebellious or they they are as animals but we're likened to sheep who can easily go astray without putting our our lives in the in the shepherd's hands and but you see kind of themes of that kind of the sheep we as the sheep and that's what I think the psalmist is addressing be careful as sheep because you know from wilderness times you can go your own way you can do your own thing so know the shepherd's voice know your God's uh, voice there so hello so good. Any other thoughts on that? No? All right. Oh, so good. 
Well, I want to just close out in, in a word of prayer. And yeah, those of you online or, you know, you're connected to uh, just at least people of our ohana, but, you know, if you're going to another church, the bottom line is he lets, uh, let's support one another through uh, times of the wild, through times of wilderness, or there's things going on that, you know, in your hearts, and and how we can do that. As I've always said, we need each other. So if you need prayer, uh, a call, or whatever it might be, myself, the leaders, I mean, reach out uh, for that. And then, uh, would you be that person to initiate, uh, to to be? God's hands, His voice, uh, His His feet, and the Lord's put it on 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 your hearts as well, right? To to be support to others, family, and others in the body of Christ. So, yeah, let's uh, let's do that as we are are filled, reminded, encouraged as we learn some of these lessons and fix our eyes on who who God is. This thanksgiving season every every day and year is thanksgiving season but as we do that um, let's let's go out and, and be his presence sort of be his light love hands feet and voice amen amen <laughs> oh amen uh, i wanted w with that in mind i just wanted to remind those of you part of manoa uh, we go back to the one service we've had three services the past two weekends uh, for kind of Thanksgiving communion. And so we go back to uh, one service here at the house and we have room upwards to 18 to 20 people. So those of you who are part of the Ohana, you want to be put on the list, just get a hold of myself or if you have Joy, Takata's email, but just get a hold of us and we'll get you on the list because I know uh, there's there's people who want to, to have that that fellowship and and again we are practicing all the protocols and and totally respect where wherever you're at in that but we we do uh, believe that yeah we can fellowship safely and honor the Lord uh, that way all right so well love you guys let me pray father thank you so much for the gift of this time and your word God thank you for family um, immediate and and in relationship with the family of God as well. And uh, we pray for your name's sake, continue to help us to learn lessons, uh, to be guided, corrected, convicted uh, towards uh, just being transformed into your awesome image. And thank you. Thank you. Um, Lord, bless each one uh, just with your heart uh, to continue growing in you and loving you and pursuing you and, and then being uh, just you, your presence, your voice, your hands, your feet uh, to, to those around them. Lord, help us to remember if there's anyone that you call us to reach out we haven't seen or heard from, put that on our hearts, Lord, uh, for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Love you all. Have an awesome, happy Aloha Thanksgiving. Cheese.